Hello everyone, I am LilyMoo961, welcome to the channel. In today's video, we will be continuing with an experiment that explores how various BTS songs fit into the narrative and themes of Yoko Taro's video game masterpiece, Near Automata. This is part two of this little experiment, so if you have not seen the first video in the series in which I covered RM song Tokyo and how it fits into the themes of Nier Automata's introduction, please go and check that out. The link will be in the description. In this exercise of expressing Automata's story as a K-pop album, Tokyo was the introduction piece. Its purpose was to set the tone of the experience ahead, just as 2B's opening narration sets the tone of the story within the game. However, in K-pop albums, the first track, though it serves as an introduction, is not the thesis statement of an album. The thesis statement of a K-pop album is the title track. In K-pop, the title track is usually presented ahead of the album with a music video, either a short period before an album release or on the day of an album release. The title track, with its corresponding music video, presents the core concept of the album it is attached to. And so, while Tokyo gave us the summation of what 2B and 9S's relationship is through the line, why do love and hate sound just the same to me, their relationship is not the core topic of the game. Automata's thesis statement is intrinsically tied with themes about purpose, what it means to be human, and the existential crisis that comes when someone's purpose is taken from them or when a person's core belief is proven false or is radically altered due to the conflicts the main cast find themselves embroiled in. If there is nothing to believe in amidst all the warfare, then everything is meaningless. If there is no one to fight for, everything is meaningless. Without purpose, life is meaningless. When characters within Automata lose their purpose, it often leads to a mental and emotional descent for them, even to the point of death. What BTS song has all that? They're a K-pop boy band. There's no way any of their songs have that kind of depth. <laughs> I couldn't even say that with a straight face because let me tell you, there is one song in particular that really, really fits, and we're about to explore that. On January 17th, 2020, BTS released a single entitled Black Swan from the album Map of the Soul 7, which was released roughly a month later. This song and the two music videos it received were heavily inspired by the 2010 film of the same name. The first of these two music videos was described as an art film and included an interpretive dance by the MN Dance Company. At the start of that video is a quote from Martha Graham, who revolutionized the world of modern dance during the course of her performing career, which spanned from 1923 to around 1970. The quote is as follows. A dancer dies twice, once when they stop dancing, and this first death is the more painful. In the years after her retirement, Graham fell into a deep depression and her health rapidly declined from alcohol abuse. A quote from her autobiography describing this time after she stopped dancing reads as follows. I had lost my will to live. I stayed home alone, ate very little, and drank too much and brooded. My face was ruined, and people say I looked odd, which I agreed with. Finally, my system just gave in. I was in the hospital for a long time, much of it in a coma. Martha Graham eventually went on to recover her health and choreographed at least 10 new ballets. She continued with this work until her death in 1991. Drawing inspiration from the quote used in the art film, the lyrical content of Black Swan and the visuals that accompany the two music videos are all about the death to what a person perceives as their purpose in life. Black Swan is a song showcasing BTS's fear of losing their passion for music and performing because it is this purpose that has shaped the course of their lives for so long. Within Near Automata, the androids are subjugated to the remnants of humanity who have taken refuge on the moon fighting against the machines, which were sent by aliens to basically destroy and conquer the world, is an android's entire reason for existing in this broken world. The war effort on behalf of humanity is all their lives amount to. And so, it is without any hesitation that I present BTS's Black Swan as the title track for Near Automata. But for today's video, we are only going to examine the first half of the song lyrically. Why? Well, 
For those of you who are well acquainted with Automata, let's just say that the first half of Black Swan is root A and B. The second half is root C. That's the only way I know how to explain why I'm splitting it right now. For you see, just as there are two music videos for this song, there are also two versions of this song to listen to. So for today's analysis, I suggest listening to the studio version of the song, which I will link in the description. Now just like last time, this is the point where I'm going to ask you to open this song up in a different tab and listen along as I describe the music of the track. Black Swan opens on what sounds like Eastern European and Asian musical elements, followed by a trap beat when Jungkook starts to sing the opening lines, which give a command. After his two lines, he is followed by Jimin. His line is almost an echo to Jungkook's, but instead of a command, he asks questions, then demands an answer in what can only be called a plea. This is when the beat really kicks in and Suga starts his lines. The energy of the song is beginning to build. RM follows with his line, further expounding upon the fears Suga expresses in his lines. These lines are RM's only lines in this song. Put a pin in this, I will be coming back to it. Young sings the first part of the pre-chorus. The beat is a little faster and even mimics a heartbeat in spots. Then Jimin returns and the beat fades out at the end of his line, thus musically expressing the lyric he ends on in this pre-chorus. Jungga comes back in, leading the chorus with what he and the other BTS members are experiencing in their day-to-day -day existence. Jimin follows and expresses the long-term effect of what their lives have become. They are tied down to this purpose they never anticipated having, and in this line, Jimin questions if the listener is hearing them. Young follows, practically starting the chorus over while once again expressing what's happening to them emotionally. Jin states its effect while simultaneously asking the listener if they are really hearing what they're saying in this song. Certain lines have repeating words as a way to get them in your head. It's an extremely catchy chorus where certain words are screaming at you, begging you, the listener, to pay attention. But in ending on a question, the BTS members don't necessarily believe that all the repetition is working. There's a clear message that the listener still isn't getting despite all the hints and warning signs. And when the chorus ends, the beat drops out, fading into Jimin singing the opening command Jungkook vocalized at the beginning. This time, Young responds with the questions, inciting the change coming within the lyrical content of the song. We're not examining the lyrical content of the second half in this video, but since I'm mostly describing the music here, I will mention that J-Hope starts his line softly and then gets more forceful in his second line, which starts a crescendo into Suga's line where he's coming to a revelation. The energy is the strongest within this section of the song. It's where a question is answered musically speaking. Jungkook starts the pre-chorus this time and he is singing different lyrics here. They're not hopeful, just resolute. A decision has been made. The same can be said with Jin's lines following what Jungkook sings. The chorus is the same lyrically, but now Jimin is opening the chorus instead of Jungkook. Keep Jimin's role in this song in mind moving forward also. He's going to be a key component of my thesis regarding this song in relation to Automata. One other neat thing that happens after the chorus ends is that we return to the opening of the song. Jin sings the command, and Jungkook sings the questions, bringing the song full circle, which again, we'll talk about at another time. The main point of this exercise of going through the song and stating who is singing when is to put forth how the structural components of this song are also built on this idea of how different people handle existential crisis. In relation to Nier Automata, existentialism is a core element of the game's story and lore, and I'm going to thoroughly expound upon this as we go through the first half of Black Swan line by line. Quick note, this song is originally in Korean. I will be singing all the lines in English, which means that some pieces of the lyric translation have been adjusted slightly to compensate for the change in rhythm caused by the switch in language. If everybody's cool with that, then let's begin. Do you think, do you think with me now? Do you think, do you think with me now? What's my thing? What's my thing? Tell me now. Tell me now. Yeah, 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 yeah. As stated before, the opening line is a command to do your thing. In other words, fulfill your purpose. 
The purpose of the androids within Automata is to fight against the machines and win the war they're fighting so the humans on the moon can return to Earth. This command to fulfill this purpose is followed by someone questioning their purpose. Within the song, Jimin is the one who sings this line. For this song, he is going to be our representative for 9S. As a character, 9S is very inquisitive as he was built to gather reconnaissance data and weaken their enemies through hacking. He is not a physically strong character, but he is capable of short range combat. When we meet him at the beginning of the game, he is a cheerful character who easily expresses what he's feeling at any given time, despite 2B's statements about emotions being prohibited in Yorha. 9S is the main one who will continuously affirm that machines have no emotions despite all the evidence pointing to the contrary. The primary reason he does this is because entertaining the idea that the machine lifeforms could also have sentience disrupts the belief system ingrained in him. It is the one thing in his life he is almost unwilling to question for reasons we do not know within Route A. 2B is more resigned in her beliefs concerning the machines and often questions what makes them so different from the androids. But in the few times when she hesitates in her preconceived notion about machines, 9S is there to remind her of what they've known throughout their entire existence. Machines are the enemy. The one time 9S questions it, 2B essentially throws his own words back at his face. These are just examples of the early campaign through the game, but we see in these first few hours how 2B and 9S's interactions with each other are tied down to their duty to humanity. They are both aware of what their purpose is, but 9S openly complains about work, while 2B is the model for stoic professionalism, chastising him for such feelings, even though she is just as despondent about their work as he is. Through the organization of Yorha, they are told to fulfill their purpose, to do their thing. But beneath the surface, they both wonder, what happens to my purpose once this war ends? What's my thing? Let's examine the next set of lines. The heart no longer races when hearing the music play. Trying to pull up, seems like time has stopped. Oh, that will be my first death I've been always afraid of. In applying these lines to Automata, the main idea is that the Yorha androids struggle to find anything meaningful in the work they're doing, especially to be a 9S. Additionally, in the lore of Yoko Taro's universe, there came a point when the Earth stopped rotating, leaving Tokyo, the place where Automata takes place, in eternal sunlight. And so, though we know time moves within the game, there is no day and night cycle. Daylight is all anyone ever sees in this part of the world. In this way, time has stopped. To follow another line of thought, if a Yorha android hasn't backed up their memory in a few days and they die, their memories from those days when they didn't back up are gone. Though their consciousness has been placed in a new body, that android has lost a part of themselves. This is something the androids fear. They fear losing who they are at that exact moment of their existence. Finding their old body and retrieving the items they lost doesn't fix anything for them. Though alive, a part of them is gone forever. They can't reclaim memories that weren't saved, even if only seconds are lost. Those fleeting seconds were part of them, and that piece of their existence died, and they have to live with that. Though essentially immortal, death still has consequences in that the androids lose pieces of their identity each time they die. This leads me to the next lines. If this can no longer resonate, no longer make my heart vibrate, then this may be how I die my first death. But what if that moment's right now, right now? The lines I just sang are RM's lines from Black Swan. As stated earlier, these are the only lines he sings in this entire song. In applying it to Automata, it is symbolic for how some androids felt crushed under the pressure of this purpose given to them and the price they paid in trying to make this goal of bringing humanity back to Earth happen. Within Automata, there are quests where we see examples of Yorha soldiers deserting the war effort. Others wiped their memory clean so they wouldn't have to remember the sins they committed against their own comrades. We even discover two pods abandoned by their previous owners because the pods though built to be support units, also monitored and reported any suspicious activity of their users to command. Even the machines, who often imitate humanity, 
find themselves crushed under the pressure of finding purpose in a world where there seems to be none, and inevitably, those consumed by their despair destroyed themselves. RM's line is a direct reference to this idea of how those who have built their life on a singular purpose can easily fall into a depression when that purpose they choose ceases to satisfy them. This can also lead to destructive habits that slowly steal life from you. And so the line, but what if that moment's right now, serves as a metaphor for that type of depression and how some don't survive it. I do not consider it a coincidence that RM sings these lines and then he's just gone from the song. His vocals may be there in the background, but he does not enter the spotlight again within this track. And he is one of the main writers for Black Swan. And so it's especially poignant that he is the one who sings this line and then disappears from the song he wrote like he was never part of it to begin with. He just He's just gone from the song. And I don't consider that coincidental, especially given what he is singing. Those of you watching who have played Nier Automata know that there is one particular android who gets killed over and over again. This android in particular is typically mind wiped whenever he dies. And so there are versions of this android that are lost forever. Memories, experiences, thoughts and feelings all lost for good. Yet this android is expected to go back into the battlefield over and over again for a cause that he discovers later on isn't what he thought it was. And this is the idea that's captured in these next couple of lines. Heartbeat pulsing in my ears going bum 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 Try to flee but back into the mud Jump 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 No song affects me anymore I cry out silently The pre-chorus is started by Young here. He has the first two lines that read Heartbeat pulsing in my ears going bump bum bum, bum. Try to flee, but back into the mall. Jump, jump, jump. There are definitely Yorha operatives and even resistance androids that try to flee from warfare. And there's even a joke ending where 2B completely abandons Yorha to spend her time fishing and living life on the run, and she's just living her best life, just doing whatever she wants. And even machines like Pascal disconnect from the network just to get out of all of the endless fighting. But somehow or another, everybody ends up back where they started miserable. These first two lines sung by Young, though they can pretty much apply to everyone involved in this game in one way or another, this line really serves as an introduction to 9S's struggle. By the way, I should probably mention right about now that if you've been kind of just hanging out and listening to me talk about, you know, this this crazy experiment of BTS songs applying to Nier Automata, I should probably warn you now that the spoilers are coming up, like right here. So if you haven't played Nier Automata ever and you just stumbled your way into this video and you know, just and stuck around till now, now's the time to probably go if you want a blind experience for Nier Automata because as we continue, I'm gonna ruin that experience for you. And you don't want that experience ruined because Nier Automata is a really great game. Like, go play it if you are interested in it in, at any capacity. Just get out of here. Go. Bye. See you when you're done. I'll be here waiting, okay? Okay. I'm going to assume that the rest of you who are still here have either played the game in its entirety or just don't care about spoilers, so we're just gonna dive right into the spoiler territory now. Within Nier Automata, because 9S is very proficient in gathering data, Sometimes he finds out stuff Yorha doesn't want him to know, and he is promptly executed by his constant companion 2B. Though he has no memory of 2B ever killing him, one of the first things he does when you're going to the city ruins for the first time is question why Yorha is sending a combat unit to help a scanner with reconnaissance when scanners are literally built for that purpose. Scanners typically work alone, but not 9S. 2B is always there, acting as his shadow. Combined with a side quest in which 9S learns about Yorha's executioner models, he is able to discern from various clues sprinkled throughout some other side quests in the game that 2B is most likely an E model herself. And so, even if it's on a subconscious level, he knows from fairly early on that the only reason 2B is by his side is to eventually kill him. Whenever 9S learns things he shouldn't, 
Tubi executes him. And each time she does, 9S's memory is reset to before he ever met her, which means she constantly has to start their working relationship over and over and over and over again. It's a never ending cycle of ending up back into the mall. When Jimin sings, no song affects me anymore, I cry out silently. It's symbolic of how 9S's cheerfulness is a facade to cover up how alone he feels within. He wants to be loved, but he doesn't trust anyone around him. He loves to be, but he also hates her. And at this point in the story, there's nothing 9S can do about either emotion. He's stuck in a cycle just as 2B is stuck in her cycle. The war continues on without end, and the chorus echoes this sentiment. Ocean with the lights, silence, yeah, yeah, yeah. My wandering feet held in a rut, yeah, yeah, yeah. Every noise and sound's been cut, yeah, yeah, yeah. Killing me now, killing me now. Do you hear me? Yeah, sinking slowly like in a trance. Na, na, na. Struggle, but it's all ocean floor. Na, na, na. Every moment is eternal, yeah, yeah, yeah. Feel me now, feel me now. Do you hear me? Yeah. During Route B, which is 9S's route, we discover that humanity was never on the moon. They had died out a long time ago, which means that Yorha is operating under a lie. This revelation 9S learns is what sparks a change in him. And if Jimin is representing 9S in this song, it's only natural that initially, 9S doubles down on what he believed was his purpose and commands himself to fulfill that purpose because what else does he have? His entire life is built on the idea that he has to fight for humanity. If they don't exist anymore, what is he going to do? Do your thing, do your thing with me now. Do your thing, do your thing with me now. What's my thing, what's my thing? Tell me now, tell me now, yeah, 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 yeah. When Young follows with the question, what's my thing? It's a representation of the question 9S is asking within at this point. Young, in this song anyway, represents the stuff from Root C that's coming. From the moment 9S learns the truth, everything comes tumbling down. Yorha, Tubi, everything. And to learn what that left 9S with as it pertains to this song, you'll have to wait until we return to it. Because yes, there'll be a different video where we will examine the second half of the song through the orchestra version. But until then, I believe we are done for today. And this song in particular, seriously, someone on the writing staff definitely played this game. And I'm thinking that it had to be RM because this is the second time now, RM, that you have been on the nose, man. I am on to you. The truth will not be hidden from me. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more of this wild content from me, then leave a like on this video, subscribe, tell me in the comments, and all that good stuff. This is definitely a fun series for me personally, so stay tuned for part three. Many thanks to all of you for watching. Have a fantastic day, and God bless you all. See ya! Mwah.